Hello, welcome to Catholic Life, Ordinary People with Extraordinary Faith. I'm Deacon Jody Moscona. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about the Men of Immaculata and the men's conference that was held recently in Baton Rouge and not only the past but the future. I'm joined today by a couple of my really good friends, Mark Herman and Scott Smith. We worked together actually for a while. <laughs> That's right. That's and right. so uh, welcome. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate so, being here, uh, Deacon. So you just uh, finished recently the third, right? Correct. Yeah, our and third annual. Third it's annual, track, yeah. and it was a, a blowout. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, we had a, a, the highest attendance ever. Um, we sold out almost uh, six weeks ahead of our date. So um, the enthusiasm uh, of the men that were attending and anticipating the conference was was palpable. We uh, we were blessed again to to have St. George uh, so graciously offer their beautiful church and facilities uh, for us. And um, with their That Man Is You group that they have there and their men's club, the support that we have in that parish is, is outstanding. So it's, it's just really such a blessing um, to have the support of not only the parish but the diocese. Uh, Bishop Duca was able to participate in his first conference yeah. and was there the entire day and, and really thoroughly enjoyed being able to interact and engage with all the men of our diocese. Right. So uh, I remember... Um, three years ago now, yeah. uh, preaching after the conference and telling the folks at church that we had 500, <laughs> almost 600 men. And I stopped, I said, listen to me, men together right. saying the rosary, yeah. praising our Lord and getting information and, and it's grown from there. And it's so impactful to have men involved uh, uh, to accept the challenge that we face uh, to profess our faith these days. So uh, tell me your thoughts, Scott. Well, uh, I mean, like you said, it's, it's wonderful having men activated. You know, they may have that latent Catholicism, that latent faith, um, but maybe they're not taking an active role in leading their families. But what we hope our conference can do is kindle and kindle that flame, activate uh, that latency. And we hope that's happening, and we hope it catches, the fire catches fire. Mm -hmm. So um, tell us, just give us the Men of Immaculata overview right. so that our viewers that aren't familiar will kind of get a gist of what we're talking about. Sure. So we, we've only been in existence um, a little over three years now. So most people come up to us and say, okay, you know, you guys do this nationally, and you're on the road doing conferences. It's like, no, we're, we're just a group of, of local uh, Baton Rouge diocese lay people um, that were really, really called uh, by the Holy Spirit. We really feel that, you know, there was a true calling in our diocese. It all started with a lot of formation um, that that took place uh, over ten years ago when that man as you was was seated in our diocese and and the formation of men from that uh, in cooperation with other uh, groups like Knights of Columbus and others um, really brought together a group of of uh, 12 to 13 guys uh, under the spiritual direction of Father Miles Walsh, mm -hmm. uh, who's our spiritual director and, and really um, definitely had prayed for this conference and this, uh, this group of men for a long time. Um, we did have the ability to reach out to other uh, men's conference organizers across the country, so we had a pretty good idea of, of what the success factors were. Um, the, the real key to our success, though, of this conference is not the great national speakers we bring in. It's not, you know, the food that we serve, although Chef Fulce does a great job of feeding the men. Um, it's truly the fact that the, the whole conference is really surrounded and built on the sacraments. So starting with, with benediction in the morning, with uh, Eucharistic ex exposition, with reconciliation, with Mass, um, the, the men are really exposed to the, the graces of the Holy Spirit. And I think that's what really infuses uh, the vitality in the conference. And then it opens the men's minds and hearts to what the speakers are, are actually telling, telling them. So uh, again, it's something that we started uh, back in, in 2017 at Sacred Heart. Um, had just a tremendous amount of, uh, of positive feedback from that. The guys wanted it. They really uh, looked forward to it. We had to grow um, our capacity. Uh, fortunately, it was the year that St. George opened with a, mm -hmm. about a 1,200 uh, seat capacity. At least that's what we're allowed to, to, uh, to admit in there. 
Um, and really from there it, it grew in, into a, the conference we have today, which again is founded in the sacraments, but also to just with, with great infusion of, of, of strong uh, Catholic theologians that we have uh, to tap into across our diocese and across the, the country. So Scott, tell our, our folks what the, the vision of men handling what men are supposed to handle is all about. So I think there are people out here that don't realize that men have a special role to play mm -hmm. in families and, and sometimes it's overlooked. Right. It, it, it is, and it's, that's a very good question. Um, how, how can a man take leadership in his family and not just, you know, not take it forcefully, but take it gently? Um, in, a, in a manner like Joseph, the foster father of Jesus, in a Christ-like manner. And, you know, we try to always have those threads woven in with our speakers. I remember last year, you know, Scott Hahn talked about that wet blessing that you give your, your sons and daughters as you leave for work that day. Or we showed the video today of, or this year, what was the name of the video again? Uh, the Door. The right. Door. It's, it's a really powerful video on... You know, your, your whole day with your family is, is how you approach coming through that door from work. You know, you have your cell phone out, checking your email, or are you present to your, to your uh, mm -hmm. families? And that's one oh, of the yeah. things, yeah. the presence of the father in, in the household. Yeah, and just how to be more present, how to put your cell phone away. Just, I mean, it's little things that can aggregate and become, all of a sudden, you are what you were made to be. Uh, the leader of your family, or, you know, it doesn't have to be your children and your wife. It can be like, you know, my mother and my stepfather leading them closer to the faith and then them rekindling that back to me when I'm weak, you know. Right. It just, right. It's a rising tide that lifts all ships. Right. Mm -hmm. So when I had uh, Dina Dow, the director of uh, catechesis and evangelization, on the show, we constantly talk about uh, formation, that their job is to help us in our own personal to, to become disciples you know intentional discipleship right. that's the word that's being bannered around these days and really what happens oftentimes is i think that our men are sometimes ill-formed to know what their role should be to know what they are supposed to right. do and that's why the conferences are so important because those men go back and change their little sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll say, you know, the men of the Immaculata and the reason that we really uh, invoke uh, the name of the Immaculata is we we see our conference a lot like Mary, right? We are we are not the the source of their formation. We are simply pointing them back to their families. We're pointing them back to their parishes. We're trying to give them the, the tools and the means necessary to engage in parish life and engage in family life. And um, it's almost like you know coming down off of that, that mountaintop. They, they want to stay at the conference all day. They want to have the conference every week because they get so much um, spirit and, and vitality out of it. But we tell them, okay, now it's time to go back to your parishes, time to go back to your families, and, and basically um, be, that, be that leader be that St. Joseph within your, your family. Right. There's, I mean, there's so many things I wish, you know, we could teach men, right? We know that most of the men in our communities, most everybody in our communities, if they're going to church, they might be evangelized, but they're not catechized. And there's just a limit to what we can teach in one day, but we hope we'll awaken that thirst for knowledge. The diocese, like you said, Dina can provide resources, materials, classes, MAC classes, all those sorts of things. Right, right. And so um, the, it's, a, it's actually a challenge. It's kind of like throwing down the gauntlet, right? Mm -hmm. It is. Yes. Mm -hmm. And challenging men to, to, um, to be better and to get better. I guess is a better way to put it, That's because exactly we right. can all get better through our own personal formation. It starts with prayer, and you all have a lot of prayer at the conference. We do, we do. We um, we have a, 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 a again. We start with benediction, right? So it's great because we have all the guys coming in. They're getting their coffee. They're seeing each other. They're really in fellowship. But we immediately will call them into the sanctuary, and it's time for for quiet prayer and adoration. And to me, it's, it's an amazing contrast where you see all of the, the vitality and the fellowship, but then 
within five minutes, it's, it's pure silence with 1,200 men in that, in that church praying in front of the Blessed Sacrament, which is, which is gorgeous. And then after lunch, you know, we, we go through the day. Of course, reconciliation's present. After lunch, it's amazing um, with our rosary and the rosary reflection that we do. And again, to have 1,200 men uh, in prayer uh, with the rosary, uh, again, it's just a, a powerful experience. And I think it's a great witness to the men that are there that maybe aren't as active in their faith to say, you know, this is, this is a community of brothers. It's a community that is, supports me in my struggles. It, it's there to stand with me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we're all in it together. We're all in, in the fight together. And it gives, gives guys, I think, a lot of uh, courage and inspiration. Right. So even though we're calling guys to be the head of their, their, their family and their smaller unit, we're all called into community. And when we're called into community, that's where we share. And that's where a lot of formation takes place, right. by sharing our own experiences and our own relationship experiences with our Lord. And that's one of the things that is encouraged through the whole process of getting the men in, having for a full day, and then getting them out, I would think, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So. exactly. That's one thing that I've heard people remark on consistently through the years is, I hadn't seen that guy for 30 years. You know, someone that maybe they went to high school with, maybe they were in youth group with way back when, and they didn't realize that that guy is still plugged in, I'm still plugged in, and how can we fortify each other? Right. You know, how can we reestablish these friendships? I Mm -hmm. see a lot of guys from work there, right? You know, guys that you don't even know are Catholic. You see them at the conference because they're probably in another parish in the diocese. We've got a large diocese, we've got a lot of parishes, we've got very large parishes in some mm-hmm. cases, and, and you see guys and you develop those relationships, so now when you see them at work, you say, hey, how did you enjoy the conference? And it's, it's just a, a new brotherhood that's formed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's really, really powerful, very powerful. So um, for those that um, were under a rock or whatever, we, uh, we just uh, finished the third annual uh, Men of Immaculata Conference where 1,200 men gathered on a Saturday and spent the entire day um, in personal formation and in personal relationship with our Lord in hopes that they would uh, uh, take on the challenge of, of manhood and fatherhood and be the head of their families. We're going to take a short break. And after the break, what i really like to talk about is maybe... Uh, what you see in the future and, and where we go from here. You know, now that you, now that you had 1,200, <laughs> you know, what do we do next? <laughs> so, uh, so we'll be right back. Stay with us. We're going to take a short break. On the other side of the break, we'll return with the men of Immaculata. If you're discerning a call to the priesthood, contact the Office of Vocations. Join Catholic Life Television for the celebration of the Sunday Mass live from St. Joseph Cathedral at its new time Sunday mornings at 1030. Come share this time in prayer, listen to the Word of God, and worship as a Catholic community. The Sunday Mass live on Catholic Life Television now at its new time Sunday mornings at 1030.
Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. We're talking to a couple of the men of Immaculata group there, part of the board. And uh, actually, the men of Immaculata is everybody, all of us. But uh, that's a whole nother <laughs> discussion for another. <laughs> the, 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 that's a whole nother discussion for another day. We're just coming off the uh, the men's conference, the third men's conference. Twelve hundred plus men together at St. George, and um, we we kind of talked about it in the first segment. You can go back and watch the first segment. But let's talk about the future. So. You just said, the bishop said, go to the PMAC. That's right. <laughs> Superdome, Tiger Stadium, what's next, right? Yeah. We'll have uh, Bayou Country Catholic Fest. <laughs> uh, but no, um, you know, we, we get asked all the time, especially as we've sold out the conference, uh, you know, what are we going to do next? Are we going to, you know, bring this thing to a larger venue, to a larger scale? And we, we've really discerned carefully um, on growing uh, and what that means to grow and, and whether we would lose our Catholic identity by going to a secular venue. Um, there's such a beauty in having it in the church with, uh, with the, the Blessed Sacrament there with us. Uh, in fact, at our conference, the way we have it designed, we actually, at St. George, the, the Adoration Chapel uh, can be set up behind the, the main chapel. So throughout the day, we had we had women that were there praying for the men. We had uh, committed adorers that had signed up, and you're not going to have that same type of experience if you have it, you know, in a secular venue. So we're we're very carefully discerning how we grow and making sure we do it in the right way. One thing that we were able to add this year, which we look to expand next year, is we actually at St. George had the ability to live stream our conference. Uh, on the internet so it actually can be viewed on the web so there may be a way that we can actually grow uh, from you know an electronic way that would allow others to, to participate and, and, and link in that way but for right now for our 2020 conference which is going to be on February 29th <laughs> leap day 2020 uh, we're committed to have it at St. George and St. George has, has given us the the go ahead and have it on the schedule. So, um, so we're going to have it at least for 2020 again at uh, at St. George. That's great. That's great. Uh, speakers, you know who they are yet? We uh, we're not quite ready to announce that, although okay. we're working. We've we've got one right now locked in. Um, we've got a couple others uh, in in the wings. So um, we're looking for a, another powerful lineup. And definitely pray for us too. And you know, everyone listening, pray that we'll that we'll have exactly the speakers we need and that things will line up. Right. That's yeah, important that's because, fun. you know, oftentimes we say, well, you could have had or you should have had. Yeah. No, we had the persons <laughs> we were supposed to have because the Holy Spirit's in charge here. Definitely. You know, and sometimes we forget that. that. That is truly, truly the case. And I know with our speaker lineup that we've had the last, really, really all three years, um, the diversity and the types of speakers we have, whether it's priests or lay, lay people or uh, or others, um, religious, uh, Sister Tracy's come and, and done the reflection for us. Um, it, it's it's each, each person's had their own charism, and we feel like each person touches individuals in their own unique way. It's interesting. So I see you have your rosary out. <laughs> We do. We do. Too. That's one of the hallmarks of, of, our, of our men's conference is we really, really want men to, to learn to pray the rosary. Um, that's why we have the rosary as a feature of our conference. Uh, each year, too, additionally, we uh, make sure that we have our rosaries um, to touch a, a sacred relic. This year, we actually uh, were lucky enough to have uh, the relic of St. John Vianney uh, visit our area back um, in the late late uh, 2018. So these actually, um, you know, were touched to the relic of St. John Vianney. So we actually include the cards so that men can learn a little bit about who St. John Vianney is, understand, you know, what the what the, the power of the rosary and understand how much of a spiritual weapon that the rosary can be for, for men in their prayer life. So um, it's a challenge and for you ladies that are watching, um, you can't go to your man and say, say the rosary every day. <laughs> but what you can do is say the rosary every day. <laughs> and maybe it'll catch on. And that's certainly the way things happen. And that's the way the, the, the effect of the conference morphs into more than 1,200. Mm -hmm. Because you've got now 1,200 men saying the rosary. Yeah. And somebody's going to see them saying the rosary and say, what are you doing? And maybe I should do it too. And that's how that powerful weapon 
is weaponized mm. against the devil who we don't tend to talk about, but we should because right, right. He, he's there, he's real, and he challenges men. And that's really why we got to where we are in a large degree with men kind of um, wimping out. Oh, that's you know? exactly right. And, and we need to take hold again and stop that nonsense. Mm -hmm. And that's why we kind of kicked it up a notch this year. Um, rosary, we've kind of built off the rosary. We're doing the consecration this year, right. a Marian consecration. Mm -hmm. um, leading, you know, the, first, the day of the conference was the first day of the con consecration. And then even it's going to be, was April 15th? April 10th, actually. April 10th. Is, uh, we'll have our consecration mass, you know, and, and in between we've been sending emails uh, to the men, to the men that are okay with us sending, a, sending pestering emails every day mm -hmm. at 5.30 um, with videos at Catholic TV, the studios, and Steve Lee helped us make and produce, and they're awesome, and we got all our kind of Catholic luminaries from our community to record a reflection, a Marian reflection. So now that the men are tied into Mary, you know, there's nothing that's going to, the devil has to watch out for them now, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's, that's really so powerful. Um, and like you said, Mary always pointed to her son. She never pointed to herself. And yeah. you're sending these men out to their place, their parish, their family, and you're saying, go get busy, mm -hmm. you know, do what you're supposed to do. And I know that makes it kind of sound funny and simple, but really it's not that complicated. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that my experience historically is that mostly in the mornings it's women coming to Mass. But lately, there are more men coming to Mass than wow. women, which is blowing my Great. mind because I'm seeing something different out there. Now, I'm still saddened when I see a mom with two or three kids come in the church and no dad and and I I pray for them every time I see one I pray for the dad you know I want the Holy Spirit to to, to do his thing you yeah. get that guy here and we never know I'm, I'm not yeah, I'm trying yeah. not to judge maybe he's working maybe you know maybe there's a legitimate reason maybe there is no dad you know mm -hmm. um, but our hope is that what we see in the pews are families, That's right. mother, father, children, and children respecting their father because he respects his wife and they respect the Lord. Yeah. And that's, so what, that's what we need. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's so stronger true. than that. Mm -hmm. That's the building block of, of our society. And um, that's what uh, Pope St. John Paul II said, right? So go, the world goes, so goes the family, right? So uh, we feel our call is to uh, really engage the men. That's our, our subtitle of our conference for the first three years has been a, a call to battle because we truly believe it is a spiritual battle. And we feel like we are commissioning men you know, to go out into the world, to go back to their families, go to their parishes, but go out in the greater society to, to fight that battle. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why we give them a, a, a nice bag uh, with the rosary as a spiritual weapon in there. We also, you know, give them formation materials with our, our Catholic man book, which, uh, which Scott Smith produces for us and does a fantastic job. Because we know that, that just like a warrior going to battle, you don't go out there without armor and without, you know, tools to, to fight with. Absolutely. Um, so we want to engage and empower these guys to, to go out and, and fight the battle. And that's, um, that's where our logo, logo is a shield. So we give them right. the sword, you know, the rosary. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Yeah, and so uh, another component of that obviously is is scripture, and sort of we get we get our heavy dose of scripture through the liturgy of the word, and so we need to get people back to the liturgy. Mm -hmm. And when we get people back to the liturgy, they're going to get enough of scripture to 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 let the Holy Spirit inflame them. You used that term earlier, and and when people are inflamed, that's when. It gets hot, mm -hmm. yeah. And when it gets hot, that's when things cook, mm -hmm. you know. And that that's important. Um, I, I do remember when y'all were first talking about this a few years ago, and thinking and talking to Hunter, um, one of your board members, about the impact, the impact, mm -hmm. the impact. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's not the event, right? Yeah. It's the impact. That's right. It's the fruits. It's the fruits. 
And that's really what we want to start seeing and experiencing in our community. And, and, it's, and the more that you persevere, the better it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Father Walsh uh, uses the image of the leaven, right? There's only so much we can do in one day. Right, we try to be that leaven that lifts the whole community, you know, mm -hmm. just that shot in the arm, right? Right. Like the flu shot that I probably should have had this year. <laughs> <laughs> and we see that, too. We, we were blessed to have a tremendous amount of seminarians join us this year, not only for our, our diocese, our diocesan seminarians, but we had uh, quite a few seminarians from uh, Notre Dame Seminary from other dioceses come. And I feel like what that does is it, it not only provides a witness for the men to see just the fruits uh, of the vocations that we have right now, but also those seminarians, uh, as they're ordained and go to their diocese outside of Baton Rouge, they can witness what this type of conference looks like, what this type of, of planting the seed within the men does you mm -hmm. know, to, to a community, to a diocese, and hopefully continue to carry that on. And that's one thing that we've seen we have a lot of visitors that come in for the conference. We ha we literally have people that fly in. We have people that come all the One way from, from New York City this year. Exactly. We have priests that fly in. We have other friends and, and family that fly in. And you know, since then, they've actually asked, how can I bring this back to my area? We want to have this same kind of event, the same kind of experience mm -hmm. in, our, in our area, in our diocese. Uh, so that's what, that's what it means, too, to plant the seeds, to see that fruit grow, and to be able to to, uh, to be able to take and nurture this and, and see um, other groups, other dioceses take it on. Well, that is awesome. So where we are now is uh, in each parish, we need to start promoting the conference so people put it on their calendar for February 29th, 2020, so that it's locked in so you don't do like me this year and be forced out of town without <laughs> proper planning. Um, but what we do by doing that now is we start to empower, we start to immobilize our men to make sure that when the tickets become available, they get online, they get their tickets, and all the, the dominoes start to fall so that each parish can, ha can be represented at the conference because that's when it comes back to the parish mm -hmm. and bears fruit. Mm -hmm. no so not about it. So listen, I want to just tell you, it's y'all both my friends, so this is so familiar, you know. <laughs> but I want to thank you so much for what you do because um, there aren't a lot of lay people out there doing the heavy lifting that you guys are doing. Um, and, but there are many of them benefiting from it. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you again for all that you do and thank the board on behalf of all of us. And I want everybody to pray for the men of Immaculata, especially the board members putting this together for next year, especially the prospective speakers that the right ones are put in place for the right thing. And pray for our men so that men will be men and they will assume the role of head of their families, and not in a negative way, but in a positive way, which will lead to vocations. Definitely. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us today on Catholic Life. It's been a pleasure sharing these awesome men with you. And until next time, God bless. Mm -hmm.